In order to understand the chaos of the current economic crisis, we begin with the market that calls it all, the housing market. And to unravel what went wrong with the housing market, we first need to tackle a very simple question. How do people purchase homes? Well, in this podcast, I'll be giving you a basic overview of how the system works and what exactly the bank does to help people purchase homes. To start it off, let's begin with a very simple situation. Let's take the case of a man, and this man has money and he wants to save it. He has several options, and one of them is to hide this money underneath his bed. But there is an issue here, and that issue is inflation. Remember from the introduction, inflation, a time when prices rise? Well, the problem is that prices would start increasing for basic items such as food and clothing, and this would make the money that was saved under the bed seem like a small amount because it wouldn't be increasing at the same pace of goods in the outside market. The result is that this man would be getting less bang for his buck. So what does a person do? Well, he can go to a bank and deposit his money in a savings account. Unlike under his bed, the money doesn't just sit there. In fact, the bank is actually borrowing this money to finance their other activities. In return for borrowing this money, they pay this man interest. Remember what I said was the definition of interest? A fee for borrowed cash? For me, I was always intrigued by this idea of where that money came from. It seemed too good to be true that just putting your money in a bank could yield small interest. To understand where exactly this money came from, we must go to the other side of the equation and look at the case of a typical family. They want to buy a house. The problem is that the house costs $250,000. Now very few people in this country can afford to pay $250,000 up front for a house. Well, a commercial bank has access to a lot of money because it has all that money from savings accounts. And when it pulls that money together, it has a substantial amount, an amount that's good enough to buy a home. And so because the commercial bank has access to large pools of money, it agrees to serve as an intermediary between a family and a home. And so they say, we'll front the $250,000 to buy the house. In return, they give the family a mortgage. Under a traditional mortgage, the family goes through a strict and rigorous pre-approval process with the bank, whereby if they qualify for the mortgage, they agree to pay the bank back in small monthly payments. Now, because these payments are so small, they typically take years to pay off. In this case, the family would finish paying back their mortgage in 30 years. Now, you're asking, why does it take so long to pay back? Well, it's because mortgages are very expensive. You see, when a family pays back their bank, their payments are divided into two parts. Principal, which is the original portion of the loan that you owe a bank. In the example we discussed, that's the $250,000 that the bank paid up front for the house. And interest, that's the fee that you have to pay the bank for borrowing their $250,000 in the first place. What most people don't realize is how large that interest can be in the overall scheme of things. Every month, this family would pay down the principal and it would accumulate until they would be able to cover the entire cost of the house. Until they do that, however, they start off with high interest payments and as they pay down their principal, their interest gets lower and lower. In many cases, interest can make up more than half of total mortgage payments. For example, let's assume that this family had an interest rate of 6%. Assuming their mortgage took 30 years to pay off, the house would cost in total $539,539. That's over twice the value of what the house was listed for at market price. So how are homeowners connected to that man who decided to take the money from under his bed and put it in a savings account? Well, the commercial bank pools together all the money, usually from savings accounts, to buy that house. Then they charge the homeowner 6% for lending the money. The homeowners pay back their 6%, and then the bank thanks that man with the savings account by giving him 1%. Then the banks are the ones that ultimately get to keep that 5% difference. So that's how families buy houses 
people make interest off of savings accounts and banks make money. To review, a person puts money in their savings account. Banks use that money to front money for homes. Homeowners pay back banks with a lot of interest over a long period of time. Banks use a small part of that interest to reward people with savings accounts. Coming up, how are mortgages related to the global financial crisis? Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com.